protectorate is being led by Grand Scrutator Severius. His battle group includes an indicter, a repenter, and a revenger. He also has an allegiant of the Order of the Fist, Exemplar Warder Elias Gade, a unit of Exemplar Bastions, a Deliverer Arms Master, and a Deliverer Sunburst Crew. Protectorate chose the command cards Breakthrough, Old Faithful, Careful Reconnaissance, True Inspiration, and Hit and Run. Circle is being led by Kaya the Wildheart. Her battle group includes Remus, a pureblood warp wolf, Neoma, an Argus Moonhound, Angar, a Gorax Rager, and Lumi, a Winter Argus. She also has a Druid Wilder, a Warwolf, and a unit of Warpborn Skinwalkers with their Alpha, Kylo. Circle chose the command cards Arcane Forces, Breakthrough, Blessing of the Gods, Careful Reconnaissance, and Old Faithful. Circle won the starting roll and chose to go second. For terrain layout, we used a random terrain generator found online. A link is below in the description. For a scenario, we played a variant designed by Thomas and Dessa O'Neill called Scenic Steamroller, modified with permission. A link to the variant is in the description below. Rolling a two on a D3, one piece of terrain was chosen to be scored. Donna, playing Circle, chose the forest in the center of the battlefield to be scored by units. Protectorate deployed in two separate line formations. On the left was Severius, the Indicter, the Repenter, the Revenger, and the Bastions. On the right was the Sunburst Crew and the Arms Master. Elias Gade was advanced deployed ahead of the Bastions, and the Allegiant was advanced deployed ahead of the Sunburst Crew. Circle deployed in a single line formation. From left to right was Neoma, Lumi, Kaya, Angar, the Skinwalkers with the Warwolf in the center of their formation, Remus, and the Druid Wilder. Gade's initial prey target was the Warwolf. Protectorate, turn one. Elias Gabe moved up near the stucco house and signaled to the bastions behind him that the coast was clear to advance. Ansel Ellsworth rallied his brother bastions to run forward, forming a perimeter around the exemplar warder. Severius urged his warjacks forward seeing the Revenger running up behind the Bastions. The Indicter and the Repenter ran up into a clearing between a large boulder and a stone wall. The Elder Priest then walked up into the safety behind his warjacks and prayed a blessing over the faithful before him. Channeling through his Revenger's Arc Node, he blessed Gade with a defensive warding. He then prayed a blessing of Minoth's vision over the Revenger. The Allegiant moved up to the other side of the stucco house. Digging his feet into the soil below him, he began to meditate and became one with the shifting sands. The arms master, Garrett Shaw, moved up to survey the battlefield. From his new position, he motioned to the Sunburst crew to move up and ready their heavy ballista. Sunburst gunner Roll Oldham, a veteran of the Deliverer Corps, began barking orders out to his grunts. Together they muscled the heavy artillery up behind the Allegiant. Circle. Turn one. Tapping into his connection with the Devourer, Remus used the savage energies to surround himself with a protective aura. Kai then forced the pureblood warp wolf to run up near the sacred forest. Aaliyah the druid wilder ran up to accompany him. 
Next, Kaya sent Angar and her pair of Argai to secure the area near the stone tower. She riled Neoma, inciting the Moonhound to snarl as her mistress's furious power coursed through her. Kylo raised his snout into the wind. He could smell the foul midnights in the distance. Howling a bestial command, he sent his skinwalkers up to support Remus and Aaliyah. The war wolf kept pace with his wolf sworn brethren. Kaya moved up behind the skidwalkers and raised her hand into the air. A cool, dense fog enveloped the battlefield, concealing her army's presence. She closed her eyes and whispered an ancient incantation. Orange runes glowed around her hand, weaving a synergistic bond between the beast and her command. Protectorate, turn two. Severius continued his prayers maintaining the blessings bestowed upon Gade and the Revenger, but kept the rest of the power Minoth granted to himself. He planned to exact a measure of Minoth's divine judgment onto the worshippers of the worm. The sight of a hulking warp wolf would terrify most people, but in a legion of the Order of the Fist was not most people. The stoic monk charged into Remus, swinging his punching gauntlets at the massive beast. The pure blood easily deflected both strikes and seemed to laugh in the face of the Allegiant. After getting a better vantage point of the battle unfolding near the forest, Shaw called out to the Sunburst crew. The veteran artillerist shouted expert instructions to Oldham and his grunts. The fog Kaya called down would require every advantage that Roe could muster if he hoped to land a direct hit. Roe steadied himself to aim and pulled back the heavy iron lever, sending the huge flaming projectile screaming through the air towards the nearest skinwalker. As the shot slammed into Thorin, two of his brother skinwalkers along with Remus and Aaliyah were caught in the blast, all of them now engulfed in flames. Though his cape was on fire, Kylo managed to survive the blast unharmed. The rest were not so lucky. At dice minus one, Thorin suffered five damage. Remus was hit for one damage to spiral two at dice minus nine. The other skinwalker, Jaha, took two damage at dice minus eight. The blast and resulting flames were more than Aaliyah could withstand. The druid Wilder cried out as her body was consumed by the blaze. At dice minus three, the eight damage was more than enough to kill her outright. Gade walked up closer to the wooden house in hopes of hunting his prey. But the warwolf was just outside the range of the Exemplar Warder's crossbows. Taking aim at Angar instead, Gade let both loose into the Gorax. While both managed to hit, only the second was able to do damage, as the arrow slammed into Angar's right shoulder for one damage to spiral six at dice minus six. Not wanting to leave Gade exposed, Ansel rallied his bastions to move up to set a defensive perimeter in front of him. Severus knew that splitting his warjacks was risky but he had a plan that weighed that risk and the resulting reward if his gamble paid off. Reaching out to his repenter's cortex, the Grand Scrutator sent the light warjack running around the backside of the wooden house. He then directed the Revenger to move up into position behind Elias Gate with the Indicter running up not far behind. Severius himself moved up to the stone wall and once again connected to his Revenger. Channeling through the warjack's arc node, Severius attempted to curse Angar with a veritable death sentence.
He then unleashed a blast of Minoth's holy fire onto the Gorax, attempting to immolate him. Angar's fur was left in flames after the eruption hit him for two damage to Spiral 3 at dice minus four. Severius called out to the Bastions, reciting a passage from the Canon of the True Law, inspiring them and toughening their resolve. Circle. Turn two. Thorn and Jaha batted out the flames on their armor, but the rest of the fires continued to rage. Kylo suffered five damage, and Angar was burned for three damage to Spiral 2, both at dice minus four. The fires burned on Remus's armor, annoying him, but doing no damage at dice minus five. Kaya reined her beast in, taking the fury building inside them onto herself. Spending a portion of her power, she maintained the fog concealing her army and the synergy between her beasts. Driven by the pain of his wounds, Angar charged into the Bastion's front line. As the Gorax got into range, his target took a defensive strike. The Weapon Master slashed across Angar's chest to do 10 damage to Spiral 3 at dice minus 2, crippling his body. Despite reeling from the pain, the Gorax clawed at Victor. Kaya forced him to boost the charge attack to hit, amplifying the synergistic bond between her beast, but the claws scratched harmlessly at the Bastion's armor at dice minus 4. Kaya forced him to boost the second attack both to hit and damage, but the attack only hit Victor for 2. Kaya reached her right hand out towards the Bastions and clawed at the air cursing several of them as wounds opened across their body, spilling their blood into the soil. The wounds weakened Brill, hitting him for three damage at dice minus four, but utterly devastated Ansel. The exemplar bastion tried to tough out the pain, but in the end he lay dead, suffering five damage at dice minus four. The black clad then raised her arms to the moon and called down its shadow to envelop her force. She repositioned behind the Warwolf and reached her mind out to her winter Argus. Lumi moved into the forest. Keeping her distance from Brill, she sprayed him with a shower of ice. Boosting the hit, she did five damage at dice minus four. The Bastion's blood froze solid in his veins, killing him instantly. The Winter Argus then let loose a blast of Frost Breath onto the Revenger. The Warjack suffered no damage thanks to Minoth's vision protecting it. Next, Kai urged her Moonhound to charge into Victor. Shredding armor and gnashing into flesh, Neoma slaughtered the Bastion, doing 8 damage at dice minus 5. The bestial synergy grew as the halberdier fell dead at Neoma's feet. She then repositioned near Gade. Orange runes glowed around Kai's hand as she reached out to Remus. An arcane aura surrounded the warp wolf's entire body and he felt nigh unstoppable in that moment. Remus connected with the warp and felt every sinew in his body tighten as his strength increased. She forced him to charge into the arms master, assaulting him with a howling bark that sent waves of sonic death spraying through him, as well as catching Ro in one of his grunts. The assault hit Shaw for four damage at dice plus two leaving the Arms Master clinging to life with a single health remaining. The Sunburst crew fared even worse as the power of the sound waves slammed into them was more than their bodies could bear. Ro and the young grunt Shay Alcott died as their skeletons were utterly shattered from the impact. The last remaining grunt, Wyatt Bancroft, took up position to man the Sunburst after the veteran gunner was slain. Remus then clawed at the Arms Master with violent intent, 
Shaw somehow managed to deflect the first blow, but the second tore into his jugular. The devastation of the attack was amplified by the synergy the pureblood shared with Kaya's other beast. Despite his efforts to fight through his injuries, Garrett Shaw succumbed as the massive warp wolf claimed another victim. Using their warp-born link to the beast of many shapes, Kylo and his brothers regenerated their flesh, healing some of the wounds through their connection to Orberos. Thorin and Jaha were both healed for one health, while their alpha regenerated for two. Kylo howled once more, sending his skinwalkers charging into the Revenger while he ran into the forest. As three of the warp-born warriors began to gang up on it, the Revenger steadied itself in the face of the onslaught. Nico's attack was easily dodged by the Protectorate Warjack, but the other two slammed their heavy pole axes into its armor. Thorin hit the Revenger for two damage to column one at dice minus five. but the other glanced harmlessly off its chest plate. Both skinwalkers were driven back by the Revenger's repulsor shield afterwards. The Warwolf charged into the Allegiant, tearing at the monk's flesh with savage ferocity. The Allegiant was struck for five damage, but stood steadfast, managing to tough out the pain and stand bloody, but defiant in the face of the wolf. With Kylo's position protecting the sacred forest, Circle's advantage of the area was established. Protectorate, turn three. Severius prayed and restored his own power, along with blessing each of his warjacks as their arcane mechanica regenerated their innate power. He maintained both the blessing he bestowed on Gade and the curse he called down on Angar. He blessed the Indicter and Repenter each once while giving the Revenger a double measure of Minoth's favor. The elder priest then moved up to the safety behind the wooden house. And prayed Minoth's vision over the Revenger once more. Afterwards, he closed his eyes and raised his staff towards the heavens, calling down Minoth's divine might over the battlefield. Wyatt steadied his nerves as he aimed the giant sunburst cannon at Rima. Despite his best efforts, the shot landed wide, and only a small portion of the blast caught the pure blood. The explosion served as nothing more than an annoyance, doing no damage at dice minus nine. The Allegiant mustered what little strength he had left to force himself to his feet. He swung wildly at the Warwolf twice, but neither punching gauntlet found its mark. Severius urged his Revenger to move in to remove the nuisance of the Moonhound from threatening Elias Gade. On its first attempt to knock Neoma back with its repulsor shield, the Warjack failed, despite boosting its chances to hit. The Revenger's follow-up attack with its halberd slashed across the Moonhound's back doing eight damage to Spiral Five at straight dice. The Grand Scrutator urged his Warjack to expend its remaining blessings to attempt another attack with its repulsor shield and boost its chance to hit once again. As the shield slammed into Neoma for six damage to Spiral Six at dice minus two, she was driven back towards the wooden house and away from both the Revenger and Gade. Both her mind and spirit were now crippled after the attacks. Severius then reached out to his Indicter's Cortex, stirring the heavy warjack to charge into the Skinwalkers. The Indicter's massive banisher sword came down across Nico's right shoulder and cleaved the warp-born warrior in half diagonally, doing 13 damage at straight dice. The heavy warjack missed as it swung its shield at Jaha, but Severius pushed it to spend the last of its blessed power to attack with its banisher once again. 
Jaha was struck for six damage at straight dice as a sword carved into his chest. The Warcaster then urged his Repenter to charge into Angar and boost its chances to hit. Slamming its Warflail into the Gorax Rager for 10 damage to Spiral 5 at dice minus 2. Fearing the arcane restriction she felt under Menoth's divine might, Kai allowed the furious energy built up in Angar to dissipate as he was slain. With Neoma no longer engaging him, Gade raised both crossbows with Jaha in his sights. The first arrow flew wide, stabbing itself into a magnolia tree nearby, but the second pierced the skinwalker's right eye for three damage at dice minus five. Unable to gain a foothold in the forest, Protectorate felt Circle's power in the area continue to grow. Circle. Turn three. The fires continue to burn on both Remus and Kylo. Kylo survived them unharmed for the time being. But Remus was scorched for three damage to Spiral 3 at dice minus five. Kaya did what she could to rein in her beast, but hampered by Menelaus' divine might, she was unable to ease Remus of the tension building inside him. She had pushed him almost to his threshold, but thankfully she was able to calm him in the end. She allowed the fog to dissipate, but kept the synergistic bond between her beasts. Kaya softly whispered words of encouragement into the wind, rejuvenating Neoma and healing the Moonhound for five damage in total. Three damage were healed from Spiral Six and two from Spiral 1. The pure blood warped strength again as Kaya forced him to charge into the sunburst. The synergy between her beasts grew as Remus's claws tore into Wyatt, shredding the gunner's flesh and bone in a savage barrage. The Warwolf lunged at the Allegiant once more. Despite his beaten and battered state, the monk somehow managed to dodge the attack. With Neoma marking her target, Lumi unleashed a pair of freezing sprays into Elias' gate. Both shots hit and did damage at dice minus six, with the first doing two damage, and the second hitting him for one damage more. Next, Kaya forced Neoma to charge into Gade. Boosting her chances to hit, the synergistic bond between Kaya's beast was amplified in the attack as the Moonhound bit into his neck, doing one damage at dice minus seven. Trying to bite into him a second time, her teeth scraped across his armor, doing no damage. Kylo and Thorin tapped into the warp to heal their wounds. Kylo regenerated three health, while Thorin healed for two. As they turned their pole axes on the Indicter, the Warjack easily deflected Kylo's attack with his shield, but Thorin's blade swung true, digging into the Indicter's right arm for two damage to column six at dice minus seven. The brash, reckless nature of the young black clad bothered Balder and his fellow potents, but it was Kaya's embrace of the wilding that made her so effective in battle. Her boldness would see her now charging in the face of Severus' Repenter, not wanting to run to the safety behind her army, but to handle the threat on her own terms. Charging into the Warjack, she expended a portion of her power to increase her chances of Mistral's blade finding its target. Stabbing into the Repenter, she did five damage to column four at dice minus five. Driven by the power she'd leech from her beast, Kaya lashed out at the Warjack again in hopes of fully destroying its now damaged cortex. Boosting her potential to hit, Mistral's blade struck the Repenter once again, but was unable to pierce its armor despite exhausting the last of her energy to boost the damage. Realizing the danger she exposed herself to, the impetuous warlock repositioned back by the stone tower. With Kylo protecting the forest, Circle's advantage continued to grow.
protectorate. Turn four. Leaning on the strength of his faith in the lawgiver to see him to victory, Severus allowed the blessings on Gade and the Revenger to pass. He then gave a double portion of the Creator's benediction to both the Revenger and the Repentant. Channeling holy fire through the Revenger's arc node on Nakaya, Severus prayed to boost the arcane attack. Offering the last measure of his power to increase the intensity of the flame, the Protectorate Warcaster let loose immolating fire to engulf his foe. The young warlock was burned for 8 damage at dice minus 4. Severus then commanded his repenter forward, charging the battered warjack headlong into Kaya. Blessing the repenter's chances to connect, its heavy war flail slammed down into the black clad, doing 11 damage at dice minus 2, killing her instantly and claiming victory in the name of Benoth. 